Coffee Chats, Marvelous Monday. Hope you're well, folks, wherever you are. If you think it's Get Rich Quick, you're in the wrong place. This is the wrong podcast. This is the wrong life for you. Welcome to another Wealth Coffee Chat. Hope you're all awesome and well. Hello, hello, folks. Hello, hello. Hopefully uh, you can hear me. Good to see you this morning, folks. Welcome to Wealth Coffee Chats. Let me know in the chat if uh, it's coming through loud and clear. Dave's there already, so good to see you, Dave. How you doing, mate? Uh, welcome to a terrific Tuesday, folks. I hope you're uh, rocking and rolling, getting ready for your day or getting uh, your momentum for the week. Do some quick intros while things are warming up out there. Morning, Luke. Morning, Sharon. Morning, Brad. Good to see the early birds up and at it as we go. For those who don't know, most of you do know already, but Jason Witten's my name. Been property investing uh, well over 20 years, coaching in, and uh mentoring property investors as well and along the way done a few deals learned a couple things and each morning we hang out and have a coffee wealth coffee chat and uh you know pontificate share our ideas strategies experiences with you guys out there in the world of property investing to make sure we go the distance get uh get this thing done when it comes to building our property portfolio and sorting out what's real and what's noise uh, in the world of property investing. So uh, if that sounds a bit like you, welcome along. If you're new, great to hear from you in the chat. Say hello. Make sure you subscribe and click buttons and get notifications and all those sorts of things because we do this live every weekday uh, at about 10 past eight, folks. So uh, there you go. Put it in the put it in the calendar. Put it on the reminder. Do whatever um, to uh, make sure you get along. This morning, I thought we might talk about uh, a little something. But this question a few times about you know regional property investing, capital city property investing, uh, and which is best. You know, I, I I never like the answer. I never like the question. What's best? Um, because you know. It all depends. There's sort of how long is a piece of string and these sorts of answers. But let's talk about some things today and let's talk about some some data and some stats and uh, why, you know, most likely the best performer is, uh, is the capital cities. Well, it is. Uh, however, for some of us, we might not be able to get in there and, uh, you know, because of price point, because of, you know, whatever it might be. And, you know, how do we navigate that as a property investor? You know, when we're starting out, you might not be able to go buy, you know, a $1.5 million house within 15K of the CBD, you know, that's going to be the best performer. No, like no doubt. Uh, however, can you do that? Uh, the answer is probably no, especially when you're starting out. So what do you do? So that's what we might uh, talk about today. And starting out is not the right term. Uh, it's building your portfolio. And sometimes, just sometimes, uh, you know, your buying power isn't, isn't that high. So uh, let's talk about that today. But let's, talk, let's talk about some stats. You can't really see that, can you? And uh, 
Anyway, I thought uh, it might be a bit clearer. However, I will read them out to you as you go. But let's have a look at this. Uh, I don't know if you can see this. I can't zoom in, unfortunately. But, um, you know, with, uh, uh, with some stats just recently showing uh, the change in capital growth. Maybe I'll stand in front of it and ask the question. What, uh, what city grew the most? since uh, 2020, folks. Put that in the chat, see if you know. Um, and what, uh, as a whole, grew the most? As in, it's just, <laughs> I'll put that over there. There we go. All right, here's, here's some questions. All right, let's do this. Uh, which city grew the most? And as in percentage-wise, and uh, did you see it already? Uh, um, uh, units have done well. Um, however, which uh, location, the capital cities or the uh, regions, something like that. There's, you know, and those things are, are large and whatever, but uh, be interesting to find out what is a region, you know, how do, how do regions work? But anyway, um, let's have a little look at that. Perth and Radelaide, we've got Brisbane there from Allison. Brad's on Perth. Uh, well, let's have a look. Let's have a look at the stats. Let's have a look at the data that, uh, so, uh, the winner, um, drum roll please, when it comes to the uh, capital growth, percentage wise, you know, not all growth is, is made equal. So let's have a look at this. Uh, the regional areas grew according to, uh, according to this data, 53%, 53% folks. Uh, in the last four years, 2020 to 2024, or thereabouts. And the capital cities grew. And if you include the national, national is uh, anyway, that's interesting. Uh, no, I'll get a reason a bit later on um but you know the conversation around that next four years might be interesting might be interesting the profit all units all points so you know it's kind of interesting um the winner by 0.9 of a percent, Radelaide. Radelaide just just knocked it, knocked Brisbane off its perch. Brisbane came in at 63, um, and Perth 57 percent. Pretty good. Now, it, when you look at the big Kahuna's, the big cities, interestingly enough, the change in the bigger cities, Hobart uh, was 36 percent, but Sydney 34, Darwin 25. Well, you know. We won't even talk about Darwin. Oh, let's uh, let's uh, undo that. There we go. Um, and Melbourne, you know, by and large, seventeen <clears throat> percent. Now, if you live in Melbourne, you've seen house prices do a lot more than that. So other things have have stayed a bit. Um, oh, the damn internet connection. Anyway, there you go. Um, so. You know, do we rush off and do we invest in the regions? Well, when you get, when you drill into it, folks, you know, um, the capital cities, uh, a number of capital cities, Adelaide, Perth, Brisbane, have outperformed, um, have outperformed the regional areas and are much more secure, um, you know, uh, solid areas for future wealth uh, and investing folks. So, you know, for me, for you, would you rush off just because the stats say, you know, 53% compared to 35%? The answer is no, all right? But when you have a look at it, let's drill into what is a region and what these things are because regional areas, again, you can't see that very well, but I'll, I'll use this map. Instead of drawing a map today, uh, here's one I prepared earlier, might be a little bit more, <laughs> A little bit easier to uh, manoeuvre the the conversation as we go along. But, you know, uh, if you have a look at Sydney, Sydney's population is 5 million. 
Same with Melbourne. Brisbane's 2.6. Perth, 2.1. Adelaide, 1.3. You know, they're the big cities. They're the big populations. And if you, when you are investing your portfolio, uh, Sam has put together the idea that, you know, if you want to diversify and have a stable portfolio with stable growth and stable momentum, you know, exposure to the five cities, we call it the five city strategy, makes a lot of sense, right? So you've got, you know, uh, Sydney or Melbourne or both, if you can get into those two, two big cities, why would you invest in two big cities like Sydney and Melbourne? Well, you know, they've got employment power, they've got population um, uh, size, they've got um, overseas um, uh, immigration destinations, they've got student locations, they've got lots of things going for them, all right? Lots and lots of things going for them when it comes to um, those cities. So, um, you know, they're the big kahunas in Australia. If you can get a piece of, um, if you can get a piece of those two cities, then that's fantastic. Now, right now, uh, we had a look back here just quickly, by and by, you know, Melbourne had, you know, a, a tough time through COVID, held it back. So Melbourne's got some ground to make up, folks. And still, the government down there are being absolute turkeys when it comes to, uh, you know, the treatment of property investors and other bits and pieces. Land tax bills came out the other day. It's about another 900 bucks for most property owners and property investors. Now, don't get your knickers in a knot, folks. You know, I've seen all these articles about people like selling, oh, the world's ending, you know. Now, I get very annoyed when the government um, just does a grotty grab for cash and just rolls people, um, you know, like uh, like they're doing right now. Don't, don't get me wrong. That's absolutely annoying. But it's not enough, folks. It's not enough to go and sell your property and get out of Melbourne. I think that's dumb and stupid. Uh, and it just shows what I call the good time Charlies who shouldn't be investing in the first place if they carry on like a pork chop for a $900 bill when we're talking about, you know, millions and millions and millions of dollars of wealth into the future. It not, makes no sense. Anyway, that's not my conversation today, right? Um, Chris, no, no. <laughs> Kalgoorlie, back in the day, back in the day, tell you a quick story. Uh, I made a million bucks in Kalgoorlie. Uh, I built 13 townhouses in Kalgoorlie uh, in um, 2006. 2006, there you go. Uh, I bought a piece of land in Kalgoorlie. Uh, I got a development approval. Uh, I built it and I sold it. Should have kept it. Uh, and I never visited. I actually just visited only recently, uh, last year in 2023, the first time I ever visited physically visited Kalgoorlie. <laughs> but no, I wouldn't put Kalgoorlie on the list right now personally when it comes to where I would invest uh, because some of those locations are reasonably volatile when it comes to their employment, okay? So, you know, um, uh, yeah, that, that's the sort of thing. So what is, what is a regional, folks? And you can't really see it here, but I'll read out the list which are, which are sort of... Um, uh, close regionals uh, when it comes to the regional places. Now, places like the Gold Coast, Gold Coast, Newcastle, uh, Sunshine Coast, Wollongong, Geelong, Townsville, Cairns, Toowoomba, Ballarat, Bendigo, Albury, Wodonga, you know, Launceston, Mackay, Rockhampton, Bunbury, Coffs Harbour, Bundaberg, Harvey Bay, Wagga, Shepparton, Mildura, Port Macquarie. Like those sorts of towns are what we call, you know, the regionals. Uh, and, you know, from Port Macquarie up to Gold Coast, you know, 50,000 people in Port Macquarie, Gold Coast and Newcastle, you know, 700 to 500,000 or probably a little bit more these days because that's um, that is 2022. So, you know, uh, probably a couple more years of, of population. What does it all mean when it comes to should I invest in the regionals? Well, um, what's the pros and what's the cons of a regional town? versus a city. Number one, certainly uh, you can get uh, some price point benefits in those towns. 
Now, you used to be able to go to like the Gold Coast or Newcastle or Sunny Coast or Wollongong or Geelong, and, and you would get, you know, a house, um, you know, maybe a hundred, you know, $150,000 less expensive uh, than in the capital cities or, or closer to the capital city. Now, right now, that is, uh, that's not the case. Folks, you know, these regional locations are now priced fully in comparison to the capital cities. Matter of fact, many of the capital cities, two, two of my favourites at the moment, which are Melbourne and Brisbane for a house and land, folks, a house and land, Melbourne and Brisbane, Melbourne's the best price point in Australia for house and land on the East Coast, um, ignoring Adelaide. Uh, I don't mean to ignore Adelaide, but I'm going to ignore Adelaide uh, and, and Perth. Um, you can get into, you know, house and land um, in Melbourne for, you know, 600 to 650, um, you know, Brisbane sort of 650 to 750. But, you know, those ones are quite, um, uh, quite well value. If you try and go to a location which is like regional, you won't beat those prices. Um, it, so right now you've got to keep an eye on your rationale you know, if I go to the, you know, go out to the regionals, it's actually not uh, that much less expensive, if less expensive at all, when it comes to purchasing good quality, um, newer property. Secondhand old pieces of rubbish. Well, that's not our cup of tea anyway, right? So price point, um, you know, sometimes while you go to the regionals, um, you know, rental yield. Rental yield uh, is often... Uh, an attractive reason why you'd go to a regional. Again, the rents in the capital cities are going very, very strong. Matter of fact, you know, many of the capital cities now are out renting, out renting dollar for dollar uh, the regional locations, folks. So, you know, sometimes you might chase a bit of rental yield, but, you know, you might sacrifice a bit of cash flow and, and those sorts of things uh, out, out there. But, you know, um, those really two those those two are really the the reasons why I've seen people go to the regions and uh, right now they're not making a lot of sense. So for me, I wouldn't be looking in those places. Now, if you talk about places like the Gold Coast, Newcastle, Sunny Coast, maybe Wollongong and Geelong, uh, I would probably well I would include them right now. I would include them. Uh, in extensions of the cities that they're connected to, okay? I would I, I would include them. So I would include the Gold Coast and the Sunshine Coast in Southeast Queensland, Brisbane, and probably not Toowoomba. No, nah, I wouldn't do Toowoomba, but it's up there. It's close. So so th those cities are now expanded into, you know, um, uh, you know, mega cities really at the end of the day. So some of those locations really are being folded in, right? Um, as we go. But at the end of the day, this location, this location, this location, they're the three hot to trot spots right now. You know, you've got Southeast Queensland, you've got uh, Melbourne, Greater Melbourne, and you've got uh, Perth, really three different markets doing three different things. Um, and so think about that when you're having a look. There's no reason to run off into the May into the not major anyway the the regional regionals um when you can get very good property prices and price points closer to the cities anyway that makes sense uh conversation about that a few people have asked me about regional versus city and for my money i'd stick with the major cities or closer to them when it comes to uh investing anyway there you go folks Wealth Coffee Chat done and dusted for today. Join me again tomorrow. Well, actually, don't join me. Join Cass, who's going to be on tomorrow. Uh, and he's going to be talking about property uh, management and all the things that you need to know for um, understanding property management. So Cass is going to be back tomorrow. And then Brad is coming in on Friday, as we're doing now, getting the team to show their uh, skills and teach you about the um, nitty gritty of certain bits and pieces when it comes to property investing. 
All right, folks, that's it from me. Uh, like I said, join me again tomorrow. Not me, but Cass tomorrow for uh, another show. Until then, folks, take care. Bye for now. That's it. Adios. See ya.